Hi, I'm Gilad, and I'm this week's guest on Snappy Sevens with Hillary. I'm an Israeli uh, living in Kenya. Been here for many years, gone through some transformations. Physician, slash businessman, if you will. Um, yeah, I like that, pretty much. Um, I mean, I've been here a long time. Yeah, I'm in my 13th year here now. Um, and I've never formally learned Swahili still, but I pick up all the time. I'm like a parrot. You know, I hear words. I ask all the time. Anybody around me will tell you. I'm always asking people, what does this mean? What does this mean? And Swahili's got, it's like Turkish in a way, where the language is built that you can have in one word the tense, past tense, future tense, the negative or positive, uh, the singular or the plural. So all of that crammed into one word um, is, is not such an easy language. Plus here, certain innotations, you know, if you say something a certain way, rising at the end of the word or going down at the end of the word will mean something different. And so it's something you learn by experience. So I'm experiencing and I'm practicing. I only wrote Unajua a year and a half ago, which means I'd have been here 11 years by then. Yeah, It's different in songs. In songs, it's different. In songs, I strive for Sanifu, Swahili Sanifu, if I'm writing a song like Rangia Bahari. That's really important to me. Um, and if I'm mixing it up like in Unajua or others where I'm doing a bit of English, a bit of Shang, then I give myself a little bit more freedom. Um, but for example, there's another song that I'm working on recording now, which I already sang on a couple of shows, and I'm kind of open even though I've not recorded it. But the lyrics are, they were very difficult for Kenyans. When I asked Kenyans, is this the right way to say this correctly, after I'd found out, and three different Kenyans would give you three different versions of how to say it, at which point I called a, friend, a Tanzanian friend, and the authority told me that, yeah. I was in Los Angeles at the end of a term as consul there. I had served in Kenya previously. And I met the MD of Amiran at, uh, you know, he was in LA. He had been my neighbor in Kenya. Uh, he's an Israeli who's been here 30 years, uh, Moscovich. And very, very well known in the industry, in agriculture industry. And we got to chatting, and I saw things from the embassy donor point of view. And Amiran was doing hardcore business, the flower sector, which is, you know, leading in the world. Thanks to Amiran, maybe. And I came and said, why not use that strength and that expertise for food security? And it developed into a job that was created for me. And so that was, that was the job. The whole thing was fascinating. The challenge of taking private sector agriculture towards food security and things, things I couldn't have done as a donor from the other side, yeah? So the challenge was fascinating. That was that. The thought of going back to live in Kenya was, you know, all of us just kept smiling at the idea every time it came up. My wife and I, the kids. And so we took a detour. And instead of accepting the job I had been uh, appointed to in Israel, I was appointed to be um, chief of staff to the PS, um, or political advisor to the PS in Jerusalem. and took a turn and, and went back to Israel, told them that I was taking my year leave without pay, came to Kenya and started work for Amiran. That was in 2008. So I came back here September 2008. I, when they called me a year later to say, you know, your year of leave without pay is, is over, would you like to come back? I was so far into what we were doing, it was like I smiled at it, you know? Yeah, so we did eight years of, you know, Amiran, agriculture, empowerment, um, awesome projects, great fulfillment, amazing exposure to what is possible. <laughs> because I don't play football. <laughs> because I was never taught enough to play basketball. Everybody has different skills. You know, I remember growing up among our cousins, my brothers, especially my older brother, and my two cousins were all in the 190 meter, 2 meter, 202, played basketball. And when we would go play, <laughs> I'd convince myself that I had the moves of the, the, you know, the, the guy who passes the ball. But I didn't really. And 
you know, when it was athletics, I was always on the teams, you know, I was always very athletic and very active, but not a job, yeah? There's only one Usain Bolt and a, and a bunch of other aspiring. And at music, I've always been good. It's always something that no matter what the surrounding area around, whether it was me with an acoustic guitar, whether it was alone jamming in high school in the hallways with friends, doing low, high, different, you know, like they used to do in America with the different love songs. Whether it was that, I was always good at it. And I always managed, and how do you know you're good at something? First, you feel it. And second, the feedback is a little bit extra than what you would have expected. And when that happens for long enough, yeah. We were together singing in Calabash for two years already. Um, and in Calabash is also Dana. Um, and Dana's a phenom phenomenal musician. And I'd been singing with both of them for a long time. And actually, nobody knows this, but I actually thought, who do I offer the song to? Wendy has a raspy kind of voice when we sing really high, which we had done together live. And we we're buddy buddy. We had been, you know, we we're very, very comfortable with each other. So I just suggested, you know, I suggested the song to her and as harmonies. Everybody knows the story. This was a mistake. I asked Wendy to come sing harmonies, and the next weekend, when we were performing, she opens a notebook and showed me lyrics. And they were awesome. Ajui kuni palav. Yeah? And I called MG, and he opened up the song. We brought Wendy in, and she recorded. But we were already, chemistry-wise, we already knew that we sang well together. That was tested. Do you believe in coincidence? I don't believe in coincidence, okay? So you might say this was a coincidence, okay? Because the true story is that the idea for the Black Mamba bike in Unajua was Mushkin's idea, the director. Um, and the idea for the bike, to have Wendy riding a bike, was Iraj's uh, idea and Michael, the directors in Amsterdam, for Usiende. And the bike that we used the black mamba bike that we got in Unajua was a random guy that the Mze who was working with us brought. And the white bike that Wendy rode is Wendy's real bike in Holland, because in Holland people ride bikes everywhere. Like you get out of the train stations, there's a thousand bikes there, yeah? So that's Wendy's bike. The black-white thing that happened there, so you tell me. Because here's the thing, right? For me right now, the most powerful message in the world happening as a result of the results of the American elections, as a result of extremism in different areas of the world. The issue of the fact that we have different skin colors has become much too important again. And enough already. Enough already. Who cares what your color is, whether you're yellow, blue, red, or gold? It's not important. The inside of what makes you function is colorless, right? So, and yet, people are getting elected based on comments like that. People are terrified based on comments like that. And suddenly racism is an issue. Usiende is the most colorless international song that God could have thrown into the mix. And all I did was write half of the lyrics in the melody, okay? That's why I said God could have. Because I, I don't know Iraj and Michael. Wendy does. She brought them in. Iraj is from Pakistan. I'm from Israel. The two countries don't have diplomatic relations because of whatever. Religions and colors and Sijui what. But Iraj and I, we're buddies. We were on phone from Kenya to Israel, WhatsApp calls 3 a.m. for like weeks until, you know, and she was like the most detailed I've ever worked with. She didn't give up an inch, yeah? So in art, we can work together. As humans, we can work together. But um, our countries still have issues, yeah? So I'm an Israeli living in Kenyan, when, in Kenya. Wendy is a Kenyan living in Holland because she's married to a Dutch, uh, Marvin. The video was shot in Amsterdam. The song was written in Kenya by an Israeli. We, the directors are Belgian and Pakistani, yeah? So how many languages, how many colors? The message of the song is love. That's as international a language as you can get. 
and that's as, in music as international language as you can get. The last one was in a club in Nakuru. I've been going around. I'm going out now. Now you'll see me more and more. I'm going to Eldoret this weekend. I'm going to Mombasa, um, Nakuru, Meru. I'm, all, I'm, I'm really trying to get out there, Machakos, um, because I've only been kind of in Nairobi. And every time I go out, more and more, so the last one was in Nakuru in the club, and I kind of am standing up at the DJ's booth, 2 a.m. in the morning, singing Sema Milele, and this girl was on her friend's shoulders, another girl who was way smaller than her, too small to hold her, and she is crying, screaming, I love you. And you don't know what to do with that, right? I mean, except to say I love you too, you know what I mean? Um, but, and people share energies with each other. So imagine what it feels like to be the recipient of so much positive energy at one time. But, but at the same time, knowing that it's not about you. That it's not like, okay, it doesn't mean that I'm this or that. Um, it's a phenomenal feeling. And it gives you that energy to want it, to do it again, but also to give back. So you want to come back to those people and say, imagine I know a couple of things I can help with. Just what's the forum and here, there. But there's no hurry in life. I learned that here. So I am taking on quite a lot. And I've always done that in my life, multitask and just overload. But I'm doing it in a different way now. I'm not stressed. I'm very focused. I'm very sharp about what I want to do and where I want to go and what, where I want us to go. The African proverb, if you walk, you want to walk fast, walk alone. You want to walk far, walk together. Individuals in the Kenyan music industry have done really well and have sh you know, gotten a spotlight, Kidogo shined on the industry as a result of walking fast alone. Only if we walk together is this industry going to be... Now, I actually believe that in a few years from now, in America and in Europe, it may be cool to say words in Cheng because this music industry will have made that popular. That could happen. I think the content is there. I think the artists are there. I think we have so much to offer. I just think maybe we're so busy inside, nobody's taking the time to tell the story of this amazing industry to the outside. So I did an interview with BBC with Andrea Kidd, and it went you know, around the world. But I talked as a Kenyan artist. Yeah? Sauti Soul were on BBC. Della was just on BBC now in the UK. The more Kenyans, and at that level, Della, Sauti Soul, yeah? the more the world, Wendy Kimani, the more the world is being exposed to what we have to offer. I met Nishinsky the other day, and I said, bro, if I were you, I'd write in English. One song. Because he has it. He's been there 10 years, right? One song in English. But don't come from inside America. Come from where we are here. An English song written in Kenya by a Kenyan artist who is probably, what, top one, I want to say, <laughs> or two or three in the country. So... There are so many ways to still go, and the more of us are talking songs, the more of us are doing. If you can wrap that, you know, it's not enough to just do it. You also got to wrap it up nicely and tell the story. So tell the story of this beautiful Kenyan industry that's coming up to the outside world in a way that communicates in the methods that they like to hear. That means stay. Who see and they try to see it my way? Cause I'm not gonna let you go. Who see and they, you and I know. This is Gilad. Keep watching Snappy Sevens every Sunday and keep reading Nairobi News. And keep listening to music for the soul. Lots of love.